We are back once again for the Red Flash Roundup. This is episode four of our weekly, well, it's kind of turned into a bi-weekly shift, but nonetheless, we are back anyway. Episode four of our coveted St. Francis University Athletics podcast. Jake Slavonic joined by Trent Dunn, back with, back with you for another episode, already stumbling through. So this is going to be a very exciting episode. It really is. We got a lot planned for this episode. We got a little bit of a new uh, format for how we're going to do things here in the start of it. And we're also going to sit down with men's basketball's Brad McCabe this episode and preview, as always, with this week in athletics. Trent, how are you doing this week, man? Doing all right, man. You know, how was your trip to North Carolina? You, you were with the softball team? Yeah, I was. The uh, trip down to North Carolina was very good. It was very relaxing. Um, I, For those who don't know, I acted as the um, interim SID for uh, women's softball this week, filled in for Brian Minutola, who's caught up with uh, women's basketball, so helping out there. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. Uh, the softball team welcomed me with open arms. Coach O'Donnell was absolutely stellar she was very patient with me <laughs> knowing that i've never done sid work before <laughs> um but it's really cool uh, flow softball down in elon uh their broadcasting team elon sports visions what they're called allowed me to do play-by-play -play for the saint francis games um they were very cool about it and before we go any further i want to give them a special shout out they they covered every single game this weekend um amanda shike who is their main video coordinator pretty much my position she like commanded everything and she set it up. I give her all the credit in the world and her team, all the credit. They did an absolute job. So Trent, to answer your question in short terms, it was a very tr good trip down to North Carolina. Very warm too. That was the best part of it all. <laughs> <laughs> While you were stuck back here with all the cold. Oh, the cold, um, you know, directed some streams, but yeah. you know, had a good time nonetheless. Yeah, and you did a great job doing that. For those who tuned in this past weekend, Trent was in charge of everything, and he did a fantastic job. He'll do that again this weekend as I'm once again away with the softball team. We're going to South Carolina this time, so even warmer, uh, <laughs> playing in the Furman Classic, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. But we mentioned the new format that we, uh, we're we going to do at the beginning here. Instead of recapping everything that went on in the past week, we're going to highlight some of the most important headlines from around SFU Athletics because we want to push you, the viewer and listener, to go on to our SFU Athletics mobile app or SFUathletics.com and catch up on everything that's happened around SFU Athletics. Don't worry, we did not omit anything. We just condensed it for uh, time constraints, especially with our interview with Brad McCabe. Um, so with that being said, this is called the Red Flash News segment. A lot of updates going around the Red Flash, and I'll start things off with some women's basketball news. Lots of exciting stuff coming up from there. Uh, we start Lily Benzel named NEC perform or Prime Performer, excuse me, and Jada DePa. Once again, her name gets in the awards category. She was named Co-Player of the Week by the Northeast Conference. The announcement was made Monday, February 14th, around 1 p.m. Now, both played a pivotal role in SFU's upset over first place Fairleigh Dickinson this past Thursday. Let's give a quick round of applause. Woo! Always like an upset. Uh, they played, uh, as I mentioned, a pivotal role. Benzel led the Red Flash with 19 points, her third highest total of the season, and she had at least three three-point field goals made for the eighth time this season. Now, her 138 three-point field goals made with St. Francis ranks eighth in program history. Now, how many weeks in a row have we talked about Lily Benzel? <sighs> Let's see. It's coming to going on about three now. Yeah, so <laughs> she's heating up at the right time, too. Um, DePaul, on the other hand, recorded another double-double, her sixth of the season, with a game-high 16 rebounds, 13 points. She, out <laughs> she had more rebounds than points, guys. Come on. Jeez. <laughs> she also blocked a career-high four shots after totaling six blocked shots through the team's first 23 games to so almost match her season high. And this game was her seventh with at least 15 rebounds. And we want to thank Brian Minutolo for coming up with, that, with, that, uh, with that, those nuggets of information. So... Already off to a hot start with this women's basketball team. Trent, I'm going to send it over to you for track and field. Let's do it. All right, so track and field this past weekend, three red flash competitors brought home SFU top 10 performances. One, however, stood out among them all. Adontra Williams set the new James W. Garrett Sports Complex Fieldhouse record in the men's 60-meter hurdles with a time of 8.10, broke the pr previous facility record of 8.16. So congratulations to Adontra Williams for doing that. Mylon Cruz and Maria Ferraro brought home first place finishes as well. Cruz took home the first in the women's 60 meter fi uh, finals with a time of 
six seven while Ferraro recorded another personal record of nine point one seven in the sixty meter sixty meter hurdles. So congratulations to Mylan and Maria as well. Ferraro not only broke her own personal record, but she also jumped to fourth all time at SFU in that event. And if I'm not so, mistaken, I think she was 10th before that. So Unbelievable. I know. Our student-athletes really shining. And there's more. We head over to Red Flash Softball now. It is a positive weekend for the Red Flash Softball team. Brought home a 3-2 opening weekend record in Elon, North Carolina. So anytime you go out, you know, bring home a winning record. And I want to give these, these girls some credit, too, and especially Coach O'Donnell, Coach Petrie, and Coach Frank. They had not seen field action all preseason. They were stuck in the ox gym. I say stuck like it's a bad thing. <laughs> but, they, but with snow around the area, they can't get out to the Red Flash softball field and put, on, put in the work. They have to do it in the ox gym and in their own time with the bullpens and in the batting cage here at DeGaul Arena. Three and two, despite all that. Rachel Marsden, jeez, I call her Shohei Otani 2.0. I compared her and Grace Vesco to Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer. Whew, Rachel Marsden's Shohei Otani 2.0, in my opinion. She not only picked up two wins on the mound against IUPUI and Appalachian State, she also not knocked out not one, not two, but three home runs over the weekend, and she now becomes the first player in the NEC this season to secure two wins on the head, on the on the mound and at least two home runs offensively. And just talking with her, she she not only works on pitching, but she also works on hitting as well. She balances out 50-50, and she's told me that power is one of the big things that she's been working on, and it's proven out, it's proven fact here. I, I, just watching it, calling the games is amazing. Other notable happenings from the weekend, Mackenzie Saban, we talked about it when she was on the show, continues to dominate at the plate. She went 4-4 four for four against IUPUI on Saturday, and then her and Sydney Baker became the first duo in the conference to go back-to-back -back with home runs hit in a game. I think that was the 13 nothing win that they had over IUPUI. <laughs> that was a fun game to call. And then also a lot of additional firsts with it being opening weekend. Congratulations to freshman Olivia Yolam posting her first collegiate hit against Appalachian State on Saturday. To get really technical, it was a single to left field. Split the third and, uh, third baseman and shortstop. Beauty off the bat. Then Lindsey Ward, uh, Sydney Baker, Rachel Marsden, and Mackenzie Saban all collected their first home run of the year. Very successful weekend. Lots of momentum going into Furman, South Carolina. Trent, why don't you tell us about something new that we're doing with our news segment? So we're going to round out our news, as Jake mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. We're going to try to condense this down a little bit, just as these podcasts have been going a little bit long for our liking. So we're going to round it out with uh, some flash nuggets, as we like to call them, which are headlines across St. Francis University athletics. So to start off with women's tennis, women's tennis has gone or goes to 5-2 and two on the season after taking down St. Bonaventure this past Past weekend, that's a great accomplishment for the women's women's tennis team. They're off to a great start. Women's bowling went seven and three at the James Brown tournament this weekend. Madeline Harden topped that topped the uh, stat sheet with a one ninety nine average. I don't think I can even bowl a ninety nine. I can't even bowling. get to fifty probably. Oh my goodness! I'm terrible. And uh, Cassidy Landwehr uh, followed in with a one ninety seven average. Just awesome performances from our bowling team and men's volleyball remains undefeated in EIVA play after taking out Harvard three to one on Saturday Blake Leprando led the flash with 20 kills Jake just <laughs> awesome success all around I don't know what stands out more I mean I'm biased because I followed St. Francis softball but I think what's more impressive to me the volleyball team men's yeah. volleyball Undefeated in EIVA play in years, for the first, well, for the first time in years. Um, we saw how they played against Princeton here at uh, here at DeGaulle Arena. That was a fun game to watch. Um, obviously beating Harvard. I, I love the fact and, and we beat all these Ivy League schools. Does that yeah. just add a little bit of extra spice to it? It's awesome. I, I, I don't know. It's awesome to me. Coach Rummy runs a great program. He does. There's run a great nothing program. more I can say about that. Blake Leprando. Wow, twenty kills. And it's the name changes every week as to who really stands out for the Red Flash. It is. One week it's Thomas Leahy. One week it's uh, Blake Leprando. It's Ryan Lewis. It's it's Josh it's, Blair. It's Josh Blair. It's Ryan it's Parker. Like everybody. Uh, Everybody's just um, competing and, and and really wants this top spot. Um, 
And when that's the case, it's just unbelievable to watch this men's volleyball team. I've gotten a front row for both volleyball teams this past uh, this past year doing PA for both of them, and they're just so exciting to watch, the both of them. It's going to be exciting to see where they go with this season. I, I have high hopes for them. I have high hopes for a lot of our teams. I mean, you we read all the news headlines here. That, I don't know how you can't have high hopes. Exactly. I mean, there's so much going on here. Obviously, you know, you look at the track and field, there's breaking re- or record breakers every single week. Yeah. So the ceiling is high. Women's basketball catching a lot of heat lately. Um, there's just a lot going around. There's also a lot of success going on with the men's basketball side. They're gelling well. And we're going to talk about that with uh, Brad McCabe here in just a little bit. But really, that's a that's a great – I think that was a better way than just recapping A, B, and C. I think that adds a little bit more personality to it. So I, like, I agree. I think we're going to keep this format. I think it's going to be good going forward. But regardless, Trent, that's a look at the latest news around St. Francis Athletics. And as always, for complete recaps and more regarding your favorite Red Flash sports, you can always check out SFUathletics.com or by downloading the new and redesigned SFU Athletics mobile app, free on Android and Apple devices right now. Up next, we sit down with men's basketball's Brad McCabe, who's really made a name for himself over the past couple weeks. I know I found myself cheering for him in the press box sometimes. I watched the game for Brad McCabe. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's gotten to that point where we're watching to see what, what he's going to do next. It's just an awesome story. Dunks, blocks, three-pointers. That's Brad McCabe's game. Whew. We'll find out more about it when we return here on the Red Flash Roundup with Brad McCabe up next. I chose SFU because the first time I stepped on campus, I knew that the family atmosphere that they talked about was real. On my very first tour, I was told that as you walk down the campus mall, you'll know just about every person you meet, and that couldn't be more true. Here at St. Francis, you're more than just a number, and that was proven to me by the number of countless people involved in my experience. As soon as I knew that I could step out of the classroom or step off the field and have genuine relationships, that's when I knew I was home. Back here on the Red Flash Roundup, Jake and Trent joining you for our, as always, your favorite interview segment. This week, we got a special guest, uh, men's basketball guard Brad McCabe. Now, <laughs> Brad, he's developed sort of a cult following here over the past few weeks, really blossomed in the month of February in the past opening games. A few highlight reel plays. He's really come through from beyond the perimeter, and we're excited to have him on the show. Brad, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. No problem. So, um, February has been a very positive month for you a lot of good things happening um we've taught we've heard from coach Kremel just like how you fit into the mold for this red flash either in the starting five or coming off the bench and you know it's from what we've gathered from him you've had a very up and down season and this is sort of like a really really positive stretch can you just talk about you know how far you've come along this season to get to where you are on the team yeah um I think I really just embraced my role and the guys on my team have accepted uh, my game and uh, you know I really just kept my head down and as coach Krimmel said I didn't complain I went to his office once just to say what could I do to help this team and what my role needs to be um, and he gave me a list of what I needed to do and um, I never complained and I just kept my head down and stayed the course and did what I need to do to get on that floor and perform. What were some of the things that coach Krimmel you know gave you you know the things on that list that he wanted you to improve upon and uh, how you really embraced what he said to improve upon those areas? Rebounding, shooting, and um, consistency. So um, I wasn't shooting that well in practice throughout the middle of the year with, you know, I had COVID for the second time and um, I got sick and I missed about three trips. So missing three trips, you know, in the middle of a season kind of hurts, you know. Mm. You know, guys are going away from you, and you know they're they're playing these games and they're practicing, and you're not there. So it really hurts not to be there with the guys and playing with them and being there on the floor with them. But you know, with the circumstances with being sick and getting hurt, you know, it's it, it is what it is. But I just stayed here and embraced it and did what I need to do to get out there. And part of what you needed to do, um, which uh, coaches mentioned on multiple occasions, is you were part of the scouting team, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, can you just sort of talk about what you did as a scout um, to help the team uh, off the court? Um, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of weird going into practice, you know, every day for scout, and you're running the other team's plays, getting getting Miles ready, getting Marlon ready, um, and 
you know, I kind of embraced that my first, this is my third year here. So it was my freshman year, my sophomore year. And then mostly this year has been all scout. So, you know, I would just play my guts out and just get, make sure I got my guys ready. And, you know, with the circumstances of Miles hurting his groin and, you know, a lot of positions with, with Brunel out, you know, things got switched around quickly. So whenever my opportunity came, I just was ready to go. So. Brad, you talked about Miles getting hurt, Rennell getting hurt. Obviously, that's had an impact on on the team's performance this year, but it gave you your your opportunity to really shine, and that Bryant game was really the coming out party um, for Brad McCabe, um, showing up, making a bunch of threes, and then I believe it was the after you game where you came out and dropped 21 points, and that was really the solidifying moment in so far your St. Francis career. Can you talk about those two performances individually for you, just what that meant for you mentally? Um, I mean, going when I heard my name get called for the, the Bryant game, I mean, I was ready to go. Um, you know, I just uh, coached them all, Ronnie, Helen, T, all the whole staff was just telling me, like, just keep your composure. You know, play hard, rebound, and that was the big. The big thing was rebound, because that's a huge thing with our team. And um, you know, I went out there, I rebounded, but of course, making shots was another big part of that. And um, you know, especially at FDU, you know, like we were shooting the ball, like Ramir, Max, and I, like we were getting great looks, and we rebound, we we're having fun. Um, yeah, we've just been playing well, but we gotta f- we gotta finish these games. You know, the four games I've been in, or it's. Overtime versus Merrimack, it's a seven-point loss, six-point loss with Bryant. It's, no, well, the other game, whatever it was. But, you know, we're, we're super close on these games. we got to be able to finish as the season ends. So, You know, you, you, you talk about finishing those games, and those are and that, that's obviously important. Um, but I was talking with, uh, with Coach Jamal, and he was saying, like, this team is better than what the record shows, just, like, the way you guys are performing – um, at every game, you know the Bryant game was was that's one of the top teams in the conference. You held held strong with them for really 35, 38 minutes, and then um, Bryant and eventually pulled away at the end. But like I think it's it shows how important you guys you guys have come so far this season um, to really perform at the level that you guys are performing at right now. Could you guys touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it all started with the George Washington game, you know, first game of the year. You know, um, it's tough getting on the bus coming home after that loss, you know, losing by two. And then, you know, the Ohio game, we lost close. Like, we just haven't been able to finish these games. And I think, you know, as the season ends, we're really trying to focus on, like, just trying to finish and focusing on the things that we need to do, which is rebounding and hitting shots. You know, those two things are going to win games. Um, But, yeah, it's just been a struggle this year with, you know, finishing and you know it's been it's been the talk about uh, it's been the talk every day in practice almost just like finishing these games so really focus uh, on that going into LIU and St. Francis Brooklyn this weekend so I know it's a you know we don't always want to hi- highlight the losing side of things but coach Krimmel is a very uh, talkative guy very emotional guy and he he knows how to talk to his players especially after you know a tough stretch as you've mentioned how is he sort of like picked you guys up mentally and emotionally um, throughout the past stretch and how he how has he got or how has he kept your guys' heads in the game uh, I would say positivity um, you know he's a very positive guy great coach but um, there's never really any doubt you know in practice like you know we, lo- we lose a game we win a game like it's move on next opponent next practice next shot next rebound um, but yeah, just everyone's positive, and no, no matter what the circumstances, you know, if we're playing hard, you know, it's as much as we could do. You know, it's, it's just which way the game is going to go. So, yeah. Let's flip it back to the positive side of things. Your <laughs> Merrimack game, I think, is what really puts you on the map because of that highlight dunk. <laughs> it's hard to put into words just the question I want to ask, but, hey, how did you get a good read off of that? And what was it like realizing just how popular that dunk was? I mean, the last, probably the last two years in practice, I've like, I've always just, it's hard to explain, but like, you know, I'm always going up, like whenever I choose the ball, I just go up and I try to grab it, I try to dunk it, like, 
couple a couple times in practice year, probably three or four times, I had a couple alley oops from Ben on the scout team, and uh, it kind of just translates to the game. And I was telling him like, you know, just back at the house, like, I think it'd be crazy to have a put back in game, like, you know, like. And then that day I had it, and it was just you no. Know, the timing was perfect. Max's shot was right there. No one was right. No one was boxing me out, and I was, I'm just gonna jump and go for it and see what happens. You're like, this is my time. Yeah, and everyone's <laughs> saying I didn't know you could jump like that, and it just kind of got my name out there. So it's it was, pretty exciting. It was a turning point too for you guys because I mean, you guys kept with Merrimack, but I think that route was a big momentum shift and really got you guys, in a, in another in other words, a second wind in the game. Right. Um, just did you did that would that did that come across your head at all? Just like you know. I got, you know, I was able to do my part in helping this team get back into this game. Yeah, I mean, it just came, it, I mean, it came down to that, that Josh's shot from out of bounds, you know, that, that re, the, Josh missed that free throw and then it went out of bounds, our ball. Josh had a shot, I got the rebound, I had a shot, and we're down one. It's just like, you know, I've, I felt like after that dunk, though, like, you know, our bench was hype, our, our, we, were, we were flowing, like, we were, we were ready to go. And, um, you know, it was just the way it ended is unfortunate, but. Oh, I, th I thought we gave it our all, and we played well. But continuing on with this, it was actually the number one play on the NEC nine for that past week. Did you when when did you notice that, and what was your initial reaction when you said, "Hey, I had I topped everybody this week"? Uh, I was surprised myself. You know, I saw Offram's dunk down at the mount, but uh, you know, it was surprising to me. But you know, to me, it's just another another play. You know, like. We we got to – I want to win games. Like, I know these guys want to win games. Like, you know, highlight plays come and go. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, we're looking forward. So. Does it ever get, does it ever get old, the social media attention you get? Mm, I mean, the last <laughs> the last two weeks I've been playing, my phone has been blowing up, which is <laughs> which is kind of crazy. The, the things, like, the tables turn. I'm playing. Oh, like, I was never playing before. And it's just it's, – it's, it's, it's an exciting moment. And my family is – always been there for me and they're really happy for my success and I'm excited to for the future here so talk about like your family's been excited obviously they have to be you know you're playing I think it was up over 30 minutes the past two games and that's that's a lot and I think you got the starts the past two games if I'm not mistaken right, right. yes sir yeah. yeah so that's that's just a big that's got to be a big confidence booster for you but your family you know them being able to watch you on TV or on on NEC front row and being being able to see you you know perform the way you have like what what has that done to the confidence of you your family like um, the support system you have back at home? I mean, getting the start, getting my first career start after you was big because you know, I live 45 minutes from there, so most of my family came up for that game. A couple friends, you know, Josh's family's really close. Ramirez right around the corner, so it was a really SFU oriented crowd <laughs> so we had a lot of people there and it was just great to like see the way we performed the way we I was shooting the ball the way we were shooting the ball like we just, it was just a fun atmosphere to be and like that game like really boosted my confidence you know getting the game I wasn't nervous you know I was just ready to go I'm here let's, let's win this game so um with that being said can you just talk about some of the chemistry? I mean, it's been, as we've mentioned, an up and down year for you guys, but how has the team just stayed so strong in terms of keeping the energy alive in the locker room and really coming out with the best positive mentality that they can every game? I mean, we, we have nothing to lose. You know, the season is ending right around the corner, and we know that um, defense and rebounding is going to win games, and, you know, Coach T is really on that stuff. Um, but no matter like what what happens at a game, like we're always moving on, and we gotta we gotta play our hardest these last couple of games. So we're just trying to stay together, you know, in practice and flowing and running and executing plays, and you know we're just gonna see how this season wraps up for us, and we just want to finish it off strong. Not focusing so much on the schedule side of things. Let's step away from that. New Jersey native comes to Pennsylvania, small town Loretto. How did you get here? So, long story short, uh, Josh Cohen came to the AU team I was playing for, which is Jersey Force. Um, and Josh and I live about 20 minutes from each other. And uh, it's kind of funny because we, we, we were bumping heads in high school. We didn't really like each other. And once he came to my team, I was like, you know what? I don't really like this kid. I might leave. And, uh, you know, he came to the team. We bonded. We, had a, we played great together. And um, I had a couple Division II offers that were full rides. And 
that I wasn't, I didn't think I would really be very happy, even though I'd be on a full scholarship, which is amazing. Um, but Josh was like, you know what, why don't you come to St. France with me? Like, you know, look into it. Like, you know, you know, I know there's no money involved, but, you know, Coach Helen got involved because he was recruiting Josh. He gave him a scholarship, and then they said, yeah, come check it out. And I came out here, and I really liked it, and I knew I'd be happy here. And being away from home is what I kind of needed. And uh, having Josh out here was a big part of that, you know, a brother from home, you know, coming to college, play Division One basketball together was like a dream of ours. And, you know, I knew in a, whatever year it was or when my opportunity was going to come, I would perform when I got on that floor. And uh, I want to thank, like, Coach Krim and the staff for, like, giving me the opportunity to go out there as, you know, it just feels great just to be out there and, like, competing, like, since I haven't played since 2019 when I'm a senior in high school, so. You know, that's it's only up from here, and I'm looking forward to it. What was the turning point in your decision in coming here? What was the ultimate – when was the moment that Brad McKay realized, I want to be a red flash? It's Somewhere. kind of that – it's that feeling that you never – that you can't express. Like, you know, you just step on – you step on a campus, you step in a building or a classroom, and you're just saying, like, I see myself here. And I really felt that when I was walking around, and everyone was, like, super nice. You know, being from Jersey, everyone's like, not the nicest – <laughs> I'm like, no, they're not the nicest people when you go to Jersey, you know. It was like, it was like so welcoming and it was like a great place. And I just, I, I felt it. So I just knew I'd be happy here. And there was a great staff, great basketball program, a lot of history behind it. And, um, you know, I was excited to come out here. So I made, I think I made the right choice. So I'd say you did too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, all bias aside, I think you did. I think you made the right choice. I think you made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Brad, you know, it's been a, a very eventful season with you guys just covering you watching you guys play and there's a strong bond with you guys and you know with the latter part of the schedule coming up i think that sort of kicks things into extra gear um before we end up you know we wrap up our interview here um can you just talk about what are some of the main focal points you guys are going to be going over in practice uh i just want to touch on them a little bit just to prepare yourselves for this last stretch and make sure you guys finish out strong um you know i think Defending is a big part, and I think we defended um, going back to Mount St. Mary's. I thought hold, holding them to 54 points was um, really good in our eyes and the coaches' eyes. Um, you know, being top three, four in the league, you know, holding them to that number was great. So I think going to LIU, we really need to lock in and focus on defensively, and obviously rebounding um, and scouting their plays and just playing it the right way and see where things go, and then on to St. Francis College. So. Trent, anything else? I don't have anything. All right, Brad. Well, we thank you so much for joining us this week, and you know we send the best, you know, best luck going forward in your last part of the schedule. And I'm sure we'll see you on the court multiple times and bring us home some wins. All right. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I want to thank Brad McCabe here on the Red Flash Roundup. When we come back, our last part this week in athletics. That's all coming up after this here on the Red Flash Roundup. So, what is the Thomas difference? The Thomas difference is a better buying experience. The Thomas difference is better service. The Thomas difference is our people work for a better community. We are better, and that is the Thomas difference. Thomas Automotive, a great deal, better. Great interview with Brad McCabe. Always good to sit down and talk to somebody who is really making a name for themselves here on St. Francis campus. And I hope to bring him and maybe catch Josh Cohen and Ramir along with Brad back on the show to talk about them evolving with themselves and Marlon Hargis too, evolving uh, in the Jersey area in AAU. I hope that's happened someday and I think it will. But now we're rounding third here on the Red Flash Roundup episode four. Thank you for tuning in. So far we are almost done. So don't worry. Don't go anywhere because you're going to miss what's happening this week in athletics. I'll start things off with track and field. Men and women are at the Northeast Conference Championships this Sunday and Monday. The meet will be on Staten Island, New York, and more info on that can be found at northeastconference.org. Lots of good stuff happening there, so you don't want to miss a single second of that. Trent's got a tennis update for us. Trent? Oh, yes, I do. Both men and women's tennis head to Duquesne in Pittsburgh on Friday. Start times are at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. The women will then travel to Youngstown State in Bowling Green on Saturday. Start times at 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for the women. The men will head to Youngstown State starting Sunday at 4.30 p.m. 
exciting news for tennis women's lax with jake that's right we got our first lax update of the season they will open their season this Friday with an away matchup at Youngstown State in Ohio. If you want more on that matchup or just on the season in general, we did release our uh, 2022 lacrosse season preview. I interviewed Coach Coyne and seniors Amanda Height and Autumn McHenry. That is available now for you to watch on our SFU Athletics YouTube page. There are, there are links and teasers on our uh, Red Flash Lacrosse social media channels. So if you need help finding out where that's at, you can always head out to the social media channels and it'll direct you from there. Great conversation with Coach Coyne and her players. Can't wait to see what they do against Youngstown State this Friday. Trent, heard you got a men's volleyball update for oh, us. Oh, yes. Start off with an eventful weekend. This home this home matchup we have this Friday against Queens University of Charlotte. Coverage will be on NEC front row. Matt Manns and Sophie Rice will be on the call. That is beginning at 6.50 p.m. Then the men head to Happy Valley State College to take on the Penn State Nittany Lions on Saturday starting at 7. Penn State will have radio coverage and info can be found at PSU Com Radio, the Com Radio Communications Radio website. Excuse me. Uh, they round out their weekend road trip with a stop at Brooklyn to take on the LIU Sharks on Sunday, starting at 2 p.m. Jake with softball. Softball update after a successful opening weekend, as we mentioned earlier in North Carolina, the three and two Red Flash softball team head to the Furman tournament in South Carolina this weekend. They will face three teams. Furman, Georgetown, and South Dakota over a three-day span. First game is Friday against Georgetown at 2 p.m., then against Furman at 7 p.m. that same day. Saturday, they'll play South Dakota at 11.30 a.m., then against Furman at 4.30 p.m., and then they wrap up the entire tournament Sunday against South Dakota starting at 9 a.m., and then they're looking at an eight-hour bus ride back home. I'm going to be live statting those games, and I'm going to be nervous as, <laughs> as a, as a madman. And while I'm thinking about that scary feeling of statting games, here's Trent with the men's basketball All update. right, men's basketball is closing out their home schedule. Senior day on Saturday, but before that, they will continue their home portion with a game against LIU. The Sharks come in to DeGaulle Arena with leading, their leading score, Ty Flowers, NEC Player of the Year candidate. St. Francis looking to slow him down. Then on Saturday, it's the Battle of the Frankies as St. Francis U takes on St. Francis College of Brooklyn starting at 4 p.m. Both games can be seen on NEC front row with Pat Fairbaugh and Bernie Jubeck on the call. Now with women's basketball, Jake, take it away. Last segment, the SFU women's basketball team will be on the road against LIU and St. Francis Brooklyn this weekend. So men play at home, women are on the road. The LIU game starting at 7 p.m. on Thursday, same time as the men, and the game against the Terrier starts at 2 p.m. Both games will be broadcast on NEC Front Row by each host school. Now, Trent will be putting on the production for the men's games. That should be fun. He did a great job last time. I can't wait to see what he does. And better news, we are going to debut a sideline reporter this weekend. Whew. That is right. Pat Farbaugh went out, found a sideline reporter to enhance the broadcast a little bit, something you do not want to miss. So if you got something to do this weekend, especially Saturday, tune into the Red Flash broadcast on NEC Front Row. Lots of exciting stuff coming your way. And, I mean, perfect segue. What are we looking forward to the most, Trent? Oh, man. You know, I I am looking forward to, to working the streams again for men's basketball. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. A little stressful the first the first day we but we got it figured out. Um, Jake was very kind to to answer his phone and help me out there. But the uh, Saturday broadcast was very good. Softball again. I mean, how how can you not be excited about softball? Um, but I'd say for me, men's basketball, getting Ty Flowers. I went actually went to, fun fact. I went to high school with Ty Flowers, who goes to LIU. Um, getting to see him in the goal arena, see how St. Francis matches up with LIU. It was a great game last time. It went to overtime. The Red Flash unfortunately lost, but now we're getting some home cooking, so the Red Flash are going to look to come out on top against the Sharks and try to finish their season off on the right foot before they begin tournament play. And they're like they're 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 really looking at a good playoff uh, playoff berth if they can beat the LIU Sharks. Yeah. So that's going to be an exciting one to watch. Obviously, you said it. How can you not be excited about softball? Once again in action this weekend, seeing if they can keep their positive vibes going. I'm also looking forward to see how men's volleyball does, especially oh. when they go to Penn State, because Penn State's going to be a challenge. And you take an undefeated conference record, go to Happy Valley with a Big Ten conference, or a Big Ten school. <laughs> that spells a premier matchup right there. Also excited to see how lacrosse does in their inaugural matchup here in the 2022 season. Bring us home a win, ladies. I think that's what we're really looking forward to the most. Obviously, looking forward to the women's basketball team, too. Can't, can't overshadow them. You know, 
they are sitting pretty in the NEC playoff hunt. And if they've come out with two wins this weekend, they're going to sit even prettier. So those are going to be really, really exciting games to look out for. So, you know, it's it's been an amazing episode. We want to thank Brad McCabe for joining us once again. We want to thank you, the viewer and listener. That's right. Visual and audio platforms for making this, the Red Flash Roundup, a success day in and day out. Trent, it's been great doing it with you again, man. Oh, Jake, I love doing this. Love doing it. Well, more ahead for us. I want to thank you so much for tuning into episode four of the Red Flash Roundup. Don't forget to follow us at SFU Athletics on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date on the latest uh, episodes of the Red Flash Roundup. Subscribe to our podcast as well, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Anchor, and multiple other platforms. You head over to the anchor.fm slash Red Flash Roundup page. gives you all the links where you can find us. So that's where you can subscribe to us and follow our show day in and day out. For Trent Dunn, I'm Jake Slabonic. We'll see you next time here on the Red Flash Roundup. <laughs>